How about that streaming company that took out Blockbuster Video? <laughs> I'm not happy with them. Yeah, you're talking about our chart of the day. Let's do it. Did you read, you read the rundown ahead of time because it's Netflix no, is I'm our just... chart of the day. Shares aren't happy. Investors aren't happy. Joe Terranova's not happy. Oh, no, I'm not happy. Why are you not happy? Because I stuck my neck out yesterday on uh, on closing bell, and I said they're going to deliver on margins. They're going to deliver on the profitability. You're going to see one of the strongest quarters that you've had for this company since 2020. I pointed out the fact that it was 13% below its all-time high. There was plenty of room for further upside potential. And then what do you do, Netflix? You change all the rules on me. You tell me afterwards, all right, I get it, the forecast was a little bit dour, but now you're telling me that you're no longer going to disclose quarterly subscribers? Why? What, 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 what's, what is it that we, we needed to have that implemented yesterday? It destroyed all of the positive near-term momentum that we had, yeah. and it made me look like a fool. But I, no, it didn't. Oh, it did. You're being too hard on yourself, because I think you were right. It was a good the, quarter. On the metrics. It was a yeah. phenomenal quarter. It was a phenomenal quarter. Phenomenal. Phenomenal quarter. I think Netflix, and I'm looking at numbers, it's not my opinion, Netflix getting caught up in some of the tech sell-off stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, it, people, yeah, they didn't like the whole, I'm not going to reveal subscriber numbers. By the way, starting in a year. So we're going to get another nine months of subscriber data before, and, and Netflix can always unchange its mind. Yeah. I want to be clear, Joe, and we'll, we'll back you up. Laura Martin, Needham, probably the most influential analyst on Netflix and a lot of media and tech, upgraded, upgraded Netflix today. She's been negative, well, hold, for a long time. Thinks content spending is going to be stable, free cash flow generation is going to go up, global scale, and yes, I have to say it contractually, AI will also, <laughs> will also I'm kidding on that, I don't have to say it, but it is in Laura's note. So they did upgrade Netflix today. I think Netflix is just kind of getting caught in the tide, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but when you take a key metric out of the equation, that's not good. It just isn't. I mean, it just it's invites right. It's, it invites more on the unknown. Especially and that's not, didn't have to be that way. Really. They're, they're focusing on advertising, right? They're focusing on advertising, and and they don't have to. They, you say they don't have to do that, but they're focusing on advertising. The advertising money is going to come in, knowing who they're going to, the, the audience that they're going to hit. So that's that's a big that's a big thing right now, I think too. Now well, it's also trading at 31 times forward estimates, and this is this kind of market doesn't want 31 times. I'm not suggesting that you sell the stock. I'm just saying I'm disappointed in what I heard yesterday afternoon. Overall, is the positive momentum still in place for the stock? Absolutely. In January, remember, you had that breakout gap. You're still above that gap. You're testing the 100-day moving average. You could point to technicals. They still look bullish. I'm just disappointed in what I heard. Okay. That's all. And, and by the way, just love the raw honesty. But Netflix, you disappointed Joe and Stephanie, and that's not, that's not fair.